In this video, I am going to uh, configure VS Code to work with our Anaconda install. So we have to get some extensions and then make those extensions aware that we actually have Anaconda installed. So while this fires up, this is sort of your classic uh, look. I'm going to go over to extensions. Should be kind of blank. Yeah, and that. But there's a whole bunch. Um, and Python is a popular one. Uh, the first one I'm going to probably put in is uh, Rainbow uh, CSV is a good one. We'll install that. It really helps with uh, CSV files. I'm also going to add code spell check. There it is, right there. Install it. Night Owl is a good. Uh, yeah, by Sarah. That's a good uh, color theme. I don't use uh, I'll use this kind of stuff at home, but when I'm demoing in a classroom, I, the Light Plus scheme works best. Now I'm going to add Python, but Python's going to bring in a bunch of other extensions. This, uh, this is I want Microsoft's version. They're going to bring it. It'll bring in Pylance and a few other ones related to Jupyter notebooks. So I'm going to install that as well. And this can take a few seconds on this one, so I'll be back when it's done. Okay, it looks like it is done. So I'm just going to clear this search here, and we'll see what ones we have installed. Uh, and that, again, yeah, some of these schemes. So we've got a few extensions already. The big ones are Python and PyLance to work with Python. Uh, the rest are like helpers when you're working with data. So. A uh, couple things I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to go File, uh, Preferences, Color Theme. I'm actually going to flip mine back to Light Plus. This is the default one I use for class lectures. I also I go back here. If it'll let me. Okay, there. Uh, turn Auto Save On. I find that's really important. So you'll see a check box, a check mark by it now. Uh, under View, uh, I think it's render white space. This, I swear, suffers from what we call sticky bit, which although it's turned on, it's not really on. You have to uh, turn it off and then go back and turn it back on. And then it'll actually start rendering white space. I do that for Python because it's important whether you have actually put a tab in or a space. If we're in the three era, your whole file has to be one or the other. All tabs, all spaces. Uh, the PEEP, Python Enhancement Proposal, does seem to push you in the direction of spaces. And then there's always the battle of how many. <laughs> Seems like four has one. So four spaces. Uh, so we've got the extensions. We've got some initial uh, setup done on our color themes. Uh, I'm going to go to the settings. And I'm going to get to uh, the text editor and font. Now I only do this for demonstrations, like when I'm in a classroom and stuff. So you can actually see what I'm typing in that. So I'll just make the font really big when I'm working. In that now to see if uh, before we actually test with some real life uh, bullets, let's go in and see if we can actually configure our extension. So the big thing about Python or the Python extension, so uh, up here on the little cog extension settings, is we want to set the default interpreter and uh, the environmental paths. So we do want to set this uh, virtual environment path. So we'll do that. And I'm just going to pop a file explorer. Has it popped yet? There it is. Okay, so where are we going to go? We are going to go to C. Colon apps anaconda envs. There it is right there. So this is the virtual environments that I made before. So we're just going to make it aware. Copy that. And put that in here, All right? And click off, hopefully that gets saved. Uh, another one would be the default interpreter. Now this can be a long list of scrolling. You'd be looking for uh, like a longer text box and that sort of thing. So EV folders is actually uh, further down the list. So you can do things like space ENVs, 
and so that'll sh shorten the search to there, right? Or after Python, so it's looking at all the Python settings, and I'm looking for uh, default interpreter. Default. So here it says Python default Python interpreter. Sometimes this sticks, sticks, and sometimes it doesn't. So my a default Python interpreter uh, path to Python. You can use a custom version of Python. Yes. So we want to get. I think it's the full path. And so that's going to be. So in my ENVs, down in my GST7010 folder, and then it's going to be Python. Oh, I'm missing that. I overwrote something. Zero there. Python.exe. I'm hoping that sticks. I'm going to click off in that. So I'm hoping it remembers it. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, I think on our first run, it will... Uh, basically prompt us anyway. I'm just trying to get in ahead of it. So what it is, is by default, we want to go to the GST7010 Python interpreter, and we have other environments uh, that we can switch into, and we just want to make, uh, I guess, the extension aware uh, that it's out there. So I'll go back to here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, open up a folder. So file, uh, open folder. And I gotta go to my D drive right away. So I'll just go D up top here. I'm gonna go down to my one of my work folders. And I have a couple test pi. I'm actually gonna get rid of these real quick and just delete them and I'll remake them. So once they're gone, they're gone. I'll make a new one. New folder. Test pi anaconda. So I don't want to go down into the directory. I just want to select it there, and it will be the folder for my project. And that nothing in it yet. It doesn't know I'm doing Python yet. I could be doing JavaScript. I'll just go yes. Or I could be doing some other language. But I'm going to go in here and go main.py. It doesn't have to be main. It could be anything that ends in .py. Notice that it's activating extensions down here. So it's looking for the Python interpreter in that. Uh, activating PyLance and a few other things. It's best to just let it do its, let it spin, and we'll see what happens here. Looks like it's done. Okay. Uh, so I will put in some code, print, and I'll go test of Py and. worked. Now you can see some messages coming up there, right? So it still feels that I, uh, I haven't selected default, which is fine. I'll select the Python interpreter and I will select it to be, this is the recommended one, probably from my default settings. But now this typically gets burned into my project as well sometimes. So it's, you can see down here, uh, it's picking GST7010 and you, then you can click and switch between base Qt UI right now. Okay, so this is recommended. We'll leave that there. And then it's as simple as right clicking and then run in Python terminal. Not the one above, not the one that says interactive, but this one here run Python file in terminal. That will kick up a terminal from the bottom. It just kicked up. You'll notice that it by default starts in PowerShell. See Windows PowerShell, but we've enabled this one uh, with the conda and then to all option earlier. It's going to go for a few things and, and look for the Python. It's going to, it's in base. It's got to kind of activate into 7010 because I, I swear that's the one I picked. You'll see the prompt change and then you'll see it run the file. Now, this is just might be slow because it's the first run and there's lots of defaults. It's trying to write to disk for the next run and that sort of thing. So if I went up arrow in this window and ran it again, I'd probably find it's a little faster. Yeah. And that it all depends what you got to go on on your machine right now. I'm recording video, so things are slow. Uh, so that basically shows us how to get which, you know, some recommended extensions for working with Python, how to set them up to work with your Anaconda environment. So that's all for now.